<laughs> All right, I'll say greetings this evening. How are you? Great. Great. Oh, thank you very much. Allow me to begin this interaction with the entitlement. Believe it or not. Before I proceed, allow me to once again remind you all that we never do insist that you do believe within these interactions that we are who we say we are because we say it. We cannot prove it at this timing. However, the principles, the mechanics, the physics, the ideas that we share with you can prove themselves, but only in action. They sound very nice to the ears, but the action, the doing, the willingness to incorporate them as an action within your life is the only way that I can guarantee the result. So therefore, the guarantee is in full swing, but not simply because we are saying it, but because you are willing, if it works for you, to use it. For again, anything we have to say is not better even if it works for you than anything else from our perspective, but we offer it, allowing you to choose freely to utilize it at any time and are thereby then willing to expand and discuss these ideas as you try them on, so to speak. Allow us to then proceed with the main topic, if you will, for the evening. That being, perhaps you can say, a slightly more in-depth, discussion about what you label belief systems. Understand, we have again discussed many times that you are all creations. You are all sparks of the infinite creation itself, what you call God, what we call all that is. And all that is, is in and of itself a frequency a wavelength, if you will, the primary frequency in the case of all that is. You are also frequencies, perhaps you can say distortions or, shall we say, interpretations or filtered frequencies of the primary frequency. This is what creates you, in a sense, into physical being. The rate at which you vibrate, that is one of the ideas, that it creates your life around you. But also understand that we have discussed many times that your personality is composed of beliefs, emotions, and mentality. And this is what allows you to function and create your life in a particular way. Allow us this evening to elucidate a bit more clearly, a bit more precisely on the belief system leg of that prism. For understand that within the vibration, the frequency of all that is, and within the vibration of the signature vibration that you are, are your belief systems. And these two are vibratory frequencies. Vibratory frequencies, in this case, of awareness. But when you utilize those particular frequencies, there are always corresponding results depending on which frequency you choose. So therefore, perhaps you can say your primary belief in life is the primary frequency through which you are choosing to explore at this time. As we have also discussed, vibration attracts like vibration. So therefore, when you have an overall primary belief, it attracts, so to speak, around it, many other peripheral beliefs that are also of similar vibration, though slightly out of phase with the primary belief vibration. What this does, the effect of it, these beliefs which aggregate around the primary belief, is to literally lay down a background, a background over which the primary relief can then stand out in relief. In a sense, you can understand that the background reinforces the primary belief and allows it again, by comparison, to stand out. Now, chronologically speaking, because you are in a world of timing, you can say, for the purposes particularly of this discussion, that the primary belief vibration comes first and that the aggregate beliefs 
so to speak, lag behind. Or another way that we have sometimes shared this idea is that the primary belief is the originating sound, whereas the aggregate beliefs that allow it to stand out in relief are the echo. Now understand, when you change, truly change your primary belief, everything changes. As you say across the board, everything changes. Sometimes at first, because of the way you create the idea of transforming a bit at a time, there will be a similarity in the new background as the old, some things that allow you to have it seem to be continuous, but it is truly speaking, so to speak, a different background altogether. We have also used this analogy. You have a cube that is painted many different colors on each side of the cube, if you will. There are two ways to look at changing the side or one side of the cube, painting it perhaps a different color. One way to look at it is that it's the same old cube with a slight facelift. One other way, however, to look at it is that it is now an entirely different cube by definition. So therefore, by extension, you can choose to look at the background in that same way, either same background with a slight little change or understand that the whole background, the whole echo has changed. Now, we delineate this for the following reasons. We find in your society, individuals will begin to initiate a change within themselves begin to take certain steps toward modifying their primary belief frequency, but very often will, as you say in your language, trip themselves up and perhaps seem to cancel the effects of the change. And this occurs due to the following reason. When you change your primary belief and the accompanying background belief, thereby extension changes. If you understand that everything has changed, then you are no longer willing to look at the feedback that you get according to the old background, according to the echo itself. If in a sense you change your primary belief, but will only derive validation of change from the background, which again lags behind, is an echo, you then cancel out the change for you do not validate the change in the primary belief. You validate the seeming, shall we say, consistency of the background. What this translates out to is as follows. You can simply understand beyond the shadow of a doubt that when you change that primary belief, the background has entirely transformed. Again, it may present similar faces, similar styles of presentation at first, but it is your willingness to look for the differences in the background that have you use the change in the primary frequency as your criteria rather than an old seeming background. Is this translating? All right, therefore, <laughs> When you institute change in your primary beliefs and something seems to come up, which seems on the surface to negate that change, understand that that is simply an interpretation using the old background. And if you feel in your heart of hearts that you have instituted a change and then see what seems to be an old effect, if you label it, here comes the old effect, you get that result. If you refuse to label it, here comes the old effect, because you know that the old effect was an echo of the old belief, you can then give yourself the opportunity to look at the changes rather than the consistency, and thereby validate the background or the echo changing as well. When you validate with the echo of the old belief, you re-center yourself to the old primary belief. When you refuse to do that, you midwife the new belief firmly into your reality. 
Now again, this takes most subtly the form of an action. For when you believe something, you always by extension act as if you believe it. So therefore, that is what creates the result in your life physically, being that you are physical beings exploring a physical world. So when you would seem to have made a change and see similar things happening, the action that is reflective of the change is not being willing to use the old background. Your willingness to even look at what some of the other ideas are and look at why it is different rather than the same is the action that in a sense demonstrates to the universe that you truly believe the new belief. So therefore it is a matter of attitude, it is a matter of point of view, of perspective and of a willingness to not settle for anything less than the beliefs you now wish to have. It is very simple to change beliefs, and we have discussed this many times, but only can you ever do so by first acknowledging the old, unpreferred belief as the belief that has served you up till now, validating that it has served you, even if the only reason that it serves you is to tell you you could use a new belief right now. So therefore, you can always find some service from it. And your willingness to simply refuse to allow evidence to provide you thinking that you did not change allows the change. For change is not something you can force or make. It is something that is automatic. It is the constant in creation. Change, in a sense, is one of the only constants. So therefore, allowing that constant is quite simple, quite effortless. Forcing something to change, in that sense, is a paradox. You cannot force something to change. And all the forcing may only make it seem to stay the same. So the attitude of allowance is an open releasing, allowing attitude, a very light attitude. And that can be quite helpful in allowing you to let go of the things you do not prefer. Again, understanding that you cannot get rid of it, but simply transform its relevance to you. Now, this is what occurs when you assume a belief system. You assume the primary belief the background congregates around that belief. And then they form, in a sense, a type of glasses that you wear, in a sense, whereby you can now only see through that frequency. Therefore, you will only allow yourself to see things that are consistent with those beliefs. And when you change the beliefs, in a sense, by analogy, you change the prescription of those glasses. And therefore, perhaps you will need to squint a little bit at first to find the things you prefer within the new beliefs. But since they are new glasses, you will acclimate to them. And it is a matter of that. Now again, you do not get rid of old beliefs. It is a matter of relativity, so to speak. All beliefs are within you. However, when you choose to manifest when you choose to embody a particular belief, it is then followed by the new background. And the new background, one moment. <laughs> will contain within it different relevance of the old ideas. When you choose one particular belief, the old belief is simply not relevant to the new belief. It is still within you. It is still and always will be a choice. And this is your personal power, your ability to always have the choice. But what changes is the relative significance of the old belief. And we share that to again reinforce the idea that getting rid of something assumes there's somewhere to put it. And being that you are the universe, there is no outside, there is no place to put it. Anywhere you quote unquote put it will be within you. So it is not a matter of getting rid of it, simply shifting its relevance to you.
its relativity to what you are exploring. And the glasses of the new belief simply, in a sense, filter out the relativity of the old belief. Is that clear? All right, you do not sound so sure. Perhaps we will entertain a few questions if there is, shall we say, some lack of clarity. Allow me to therefore thank you all for these interactions allow us in many ways to disseminate great deals of information and at the same time gather information from your society. Believe it or not, we love these interactions and we love you all unconditionally. Therefore, I ask you now, how may I be of service to you? Share it over there. <laughs> when, you, when you are in the middle of a sentence and you stop cold and then you appear to be thinking or, or it's almost like a, a, a computer, you know, clicking and trying to find this data bank. What are you doing? And because you come in with the next word that is absolutely appropriate, what is that time lag all about? Now understand this will vary. It can simply be that there is a shift in the mode of thinking. For from our end, though I present myself as a singular individual, there are actually many individuals on this end, as there are on yours. They participate in these interactions peripherally, but from time to time, if it is a particular expertise of a particular being or entity, then there may be a lag in that particular perspective filtering through. In this particular instance, this was, shall we say, an exception, for there was some communication that was, shall we say, not exactly entirely directly related to this interaction from my end. In other words, I was having a side conversation. <laughs> but understand there is also the accessing of what you may label to be the self-aware computer, what you sometimes will label the Akashic records, what you will sometimes label the higher self of the individual we are interacting with. So there are many reasons why we will say that. And please feel free to ask anytime. Thank you. Is that all? Yes. And thank you. Shutting. Ace. When we allow a, an experience to transform, for instance, we experience anger and we allow that to transform, uh, what we're really doing is selecting another viewpoint and having a different experience because we're filtering that perception through another belief. Is that not so? Well, in a sense, more, shall we say, technically speaking, in that instance, you are allowing the emotion to serve you and then not going to the extent of going into, as you say, judgment and invalidation for the thing you do not prefer. So it is simply a matter of using that rather than, shall we say, feeling at the mercy of it. But more specifically, it's not a question of transforming the anger so much as it is a, a matter of shifting the viewpoint. Is that not so? Yes. Seeing it differently. It is using all your creations, not being in that sense willing to think that anything is extraneous. It is the sense that something does not belong. How can that be there? The nerve of that thing that gives you that feeling. But if you understand it is part, then the action that reflects that belief is engaging yourself actively into how to use it in a positive service, to integrate yourself, to expand your consciousness. So it is an overall attitude more than just one particular slight point of view. So in essence, when we, uh, when, when we ask ourselves in a situation, what must I believe right now to be experiencing this, and then take a look at that belief and own it, we are simply choosing another belief. We're not getting rid of that belief. We still contain that belief. You are acknowledging that you have already chosen that belief, perhaps unconsciously, perhaps bought into it because of your society's notions. But then in that sense, understanding that you have created it and acknowledging it owning it, now saying, all right, it has served me. Obviously, I chose it. Whether I chose it consciously or unconsciously, I allow everything to be of service to me. This is what I would now rather believe. And it is now equalizing both notions, the old belief and the new. Very often when individuals move on to the new belief, they invalidate the old belief. They dislike individuals who have the old belief. They get very nasty to individuals with that old belief because they have outgrown it. But in a sense, that is not integration. That is denial.
And one still contains the old belief. They're just merely choosing a new belief. Ace, but if you choose the new belief and act according to it, the effect of the old belief, the relevance of the old belief fades. And it is no longer relevant to the new belief. So it has served you, and in a sense, you have allowed it to be on its merry way. And it's, it's influence fades simply because you're not putting attention on it. Yes, and it is the attention you put upon it that has kept it firmly in place up till then. Which is the very reason why invalidating a choice you do not prefer gives it strength. It places attention upon it, yes. Fine. Now, my, my question to, to follow up, uh, when you asked how was the month, uh, how was this month? Actually, Andrew asked how... Ace. We assume it was perfect, whether or not you interpret it that way. Yes. Well, it was a perfect month. Ace. However, I find the more... Oh, but... But what? <laughs> it was a perfect month and... By the way, perfect has no buts, but do proceed. Right. Well, 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 I think there's some perfect buts, however. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> On our planet, they all are. <laughs> this is also true of your planet. Sure you are less willing to acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> or less able to appreciate any given but given one's viewpoint. Shall we say you have a lot of conditions, ifs, ands, and buts? <laughs> let me let me remove my butt from the situation. Oh, all right. And, and say it was a perfect month, and I'm noticing that the more intense the situations are that come up in the course of a month, the the more powerful the lessons are, and the more powerful. Well, I feel when I emerge from the lessons uh, to the point where I actually, when things come up, I get excited because I know I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with something that's really going to have a big payoff. Oh, right. And I get excited. Now, my question is, I find that I'm not alone in this. If I start dialing up my friends, I find that they're, they also are going through an intense period when I am. It's relatively on the same subjects. And they're making similar accommodations. They may be able to contribute something to my experience. I may be able to contribute something to theirs. Now, do understand this is what we were saying about like vibration. Exactly. Now I'm making a request. All right. Uh, or asking for your consideration. Either that you might be willing to comment on what has happened in the past month <laughs> so we can do a synoptic review for ourselves in our own head. You know, what type of issues have come up what type of lessons have come down, what types of, of uh, things have been taught, or take a look at what's going to come up, or and or take a look at what's going to come up in the next month, between now and the next time we meet. Well, we would not want to open your presence for you, but as a review of the aforementioned month, again, understand, you are no longer in that sense about to enter a transformation. You are well within it. And one of the symptoms, if you wish to call it a symptom of it, is extreme acceleration. So the past month of your time has been no exception. There is a momentum, an acceleration in full swing. One of the primary issues, shall we say societally speaking, there are many, but one of the primary ones is racial and, shall we say, class integration. These are some of the, shall we say, issues that you have been looking at, somewhat in tandem, somewhat all together, many times because of the media, many times of because your particular perspectives on what is happening in the world. But it is no accident that your particular style of technology allows many, many people to reflect on very specific similar issues at the same time. And globally speaking, this is unique in the history of your planet. For you can now all begin to individually touch in, individually check in, individually assess how you feel according to these issues. At the same time, because you are now beginning to act according to positive perspectives and create positive results, the negativity is still there. The negativity is still within your awareness, but only as a peripheral event, not happening to you but yet you can see the full impact of it quote unquote seeming to happen to other individuals. So it is part and parcel of the astounding amount of acceleration you are choosing as a civilization to create. Is there something else?
it uh, it seems then that uh, you don't think that look do understand that we perceive you are going toward one world unity so this is some of the shall we say major initial steps toward doing so allowing the issues to come up and allowing yourself to see just how many more individuals actually have an integrated non-prejudicial viewpoint than perhaps was formally thought for it is our perception that it is a majority upon your planet that actually has a more integrated perspective on this. Perhaps sometimes the minority may speak a bit louder, but they are a minority no less. Thank you. Does that answer the question? Uh, that answers the question, certainly. All right. If there is something else you wish to explore, we will come back to you. Thank you. And we thank you as well. Shutting. Come on. Ace. For me. And then you. Hello, Alan. Greetings. Love to you. Good to sense you as well. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, do, does our imagination produce our beliefs or do we choose them from a pending incarnation? In a sense, you may realize that you use the tool, the facility of your imagination to perceive your beliefs through your imagination. Understand your higher self colloquially speaking, creates your physical self through its imagination. So you walk through that gateway automatically. And then we choose from the collectively created belief systems in a particular incarnation? Unless you are a bit more crafty, yes. <laughs> I have one belief system that I can't get rid of. Uh, well, if you say so, obviously not. Do share. Well, I've been competing in sports since childhood and I've had enough competition. I don't want to compete anymore. But when I play tennis, I cannot get, get rid. I can't stop this. Do understand that you are still trying to get rid of it. And that is one of the issues, but do proceed. I can't stop this burning desire to win. <laughs> I mean, the minute we start keeping score. Why are you invalidating that desire? Because I don't like how it feels. Why? It's unpleasant. It makes it not fun. You know, now I want to just have fun. I don't want to compete. I don't want to, I don't want to accomplish anything. I just want to have fun. Do you believe that only winning is fun? <laughs> not anymore. I think winning, no. Then what is your vested interest in continuing to assume that belief? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, do not try. Simply share what comes up. Well, when I, when we start keeping score, this thing comes over me. Now understand, no thing comes over you. It is within you and you are drumming it up. What is it that you drum up and what would you prefer to replace it with? It feels as if I have to win and I would prefer to not have to win. Oh, all right. Well, there is an incongruency there and perhaps that is why it is uncomfortable. Is there also the belief that you simply wish to play the game? Yeah. And when you proceed with simply that belief, how does that feel? It feels great. But then, then what the minute is the difficulty? We, it's, it, then this, I start having to, to win. The minute I start losing, I, I really... All right. This awareness, as you say, this thing that comes over you, is it phrase, in a sense, what it is you are thinking? And understand that as this is happening from this point forward, you can dialogue with the phrasing. Phrase what I'm Ace. thinking? I don't think I think. It's, it's you don't think you think? Oh, how complicated. <laughs> Let's assume you do think. <laughs> now, what is the form? Desperation. I think maybe I'm afraid of losing more than I'm desiring to win. Then let's look at that. What would happen if you lost? Nothing. Then what are you afraid of? Validate that you feel that way and allow it to serve you. Use it. I must identify myself somehow with having to win. All right. Perhaps we can, in that sense, simply transform it. You understand that you have a particular belief, that you then feel a particular way, and then you act a particular way. Using your imagination right here, right now. How would you act if that thought came up 
but you did not in that sense allow it to take hold upon you? What would be the outward action? I would be relaxed and enjoying myself. What would be the outer attitude? Happy. Happy, hopefully focused, but happy. Oh, in a sense, this is not what we are asking, however, for happiness is not in that sense in this conversation and action. But you've never seen me on a tennis court. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps not. It can be very negative. It can be a very negative feeling. If I didn't have that desire, I would feel positive. Oh, simply next time it comes up. First of all, remember, it is not a thing external to you. It is part of you. It is a feeling from a belief. While it is happening, that is the timing to have these dialogues, for then it is more relevant to who you are than it is right now recreating it. But the point is you need not settle for it. And now that you understand that it is not a thing over you, you can understand that it is your choice to simply change your perspective. When you feel that, reflect back on what you are believing. Then remind yourself on what you prefer to believe. State, perhaps as you say, to use your colloquialism, call time out. State the new belief within yourself until you feel that. When you feel that, use your imagination to see how you would continue the playing of the game. Follow that model or template. Play the game in that way. If you wish and it comes up again, call another timeout. Do the same thing. But you will find when you proceed with the action, having acknowledged the old belief, but having the action of the new belief, the effect will change. And you will derive the joy of the playing and then have something else to, shall we say, evaluate when looking at these issues. Is that usable? Yes, absolutely. Will you do that? I will. I will you have a ball? <laughs> yes, I'll have oh. a ball. <laughs> do not make too much of a racket. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alon. For the only one you truly disturb is yourself. And you may also paradoxically find many times when the playing of the game is what is of primary, shall we say, intention you may find your incidences of winning increase anyway. But it will not be that that has to be the case. You will enjoy it either way. But you will also still have the ability to relish winning without invalidating those who have quote-unquote lost. Right. right. That's great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is there something else? Well, I did, I did want to ask you one thing about dreams. <clears throat> when I dream... I very often seem to take things that that have been happening during my waking dream. Yes, this is quite common. Then the situation is somewhat altered and seems more confined and less successful. Well, in a sense, more confined that you are able to focus upon it, whereby it may have simply been a peripheral awareness in the waking dream. But it is one of the ways that you, in that sense, address the issues that are important to you. If you do not do it in the waking dream, many times you will set up scenarios whereby you will do it within the sleeping dream. So in our sleeping dream, we can still be relating to our waking dream life. Oh yes, very strongly. And as the line dissolves between the two, that will more be the case. There will be more of a congruency between this dream and that dream. But at first, and right now that you are creating the separations, they can be entirely different realities or parallel versions of this same reality with the same players, same characters, similar relationships, but different circumstance, different events, and a slightly different, you will notice, history. In a sense, you are tapping into parallel lives of your same self. You are. You never. It's never this life. When you're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Only subtly, not completely, for you still draw a distinction. But as you dissolve the distinction, the dichotomy, you will find more of a relevance. And as you, again, awaken into this dream and use in any way you can any information derived from that dream, that grounds that dream into this dream. 
So your willingness to act in this dream from what you have derived from that dream can accelerate that process, yes. That did happen one night. I was dreaming about the LA riots and I woke up to, and went in to have a snack and I started thinking there's something I'm supposed to learn from that dream. And I realized that <clears throat> it was the Rodney King case that I was very much judging the jurors and the defense lawyers. And because of the dream, I realized how much I was judging them and I stopped doing that. And, you know, I neutralized the situation and didn't invalidate their viewpoint and just equalized it. Nope. Well, they have been of great service. For had that not been the case, these issues still would have came up, though not in as accelerated a fashion. And that is one of the things we are again discussing, the acceleration. So that was the perfect timing. They, in a sense, made their contribution by allowing by being who they were and allowing other people to then look at the issues that came up. Yeah, I could see that because of that dream. Nice. Thank you You very are much. beginning to dissolve the line between the two and will more and more, shall we say, have the phenomena, did I dream that or did it really happen? And then you will find sometimes there is a commonality in that dream to this particular life more and more. Great. We thank you. Thank you. Simeon. Hi, Lan. Greetings. Um, my month has been an absolute whirlwind. Ace. So fast. Shaking it up. Yeah. And um, I was wondering if you could say, tell me anything about the cottage, the summer cottage that I'm moving into. I just have a feeling that it's very, very significant. Um, there are several issues. But in a sense, you can say it is a form, and we mean this loosely, not in its usual literal sense, for specific reasons of self-discovery and self-reflection, a form of self-imposed solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. And what you will understand is you will begin to lose the importance or significance or need of many of what you have labeled the external symbols through which you define who you are and begin to cut through all that and look at without the baggage who you are, who you have been, and what it is you now wish to transform or continue to transform into. But you will find increased activity in your channeling, you will find increased activities with accessing other forms of consciousness that you have not yet, shall we say, began to interact with. Very exciting. Yes, I, I, the, I sort of, that's what I thought also. In a sense, you are sending yourself to your own room. Yes. <laughs> a very small room. Too. Just the right size. Just the right size. Uh, okay, good. Uh, I have an animal question. My animals have, um, they picked up some kind of skin condition and for Face. the past month I've had to bathe them in poison uh, once a week. And I'm wondering, what is that all about? You tell me. Oh, yes, you do. I do? Ace. <laughs> Can you help me? <laughs> if you are willing to take one step, then we shall dance. Okay. Bye. Uh, yeah, okay. I was, before the cottage came up, I was totally overwhelmed, and I was thinking that if I didn't have the animals, I would go to Hawaii. And, um, that's the only thing I can think of. Oh, also the idea of breaking down the barriers and allowing yourself to integrate into your reality. In a sense, they have taken on or shunted some of that function for you so that you would not, shall we say, personally create illness within yourself. Now, there is more significance to the bathing in the poison, but we will let you sit with that. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Again, take the step. Okay. What do you think is the significance? And be creative. Okay, the... What you were saying before, I didn't actually get it. I just understood one line, um, the last line that you said about them um, 
taking this on so I don't... Understand that your skin generally will represent the barrier through which you quote-unquote protect yourself from your environment. You are breaking down many of these barriers in very creative ways to again understand that everything lies within. There are external reflections, but the cause, the original primary frequency is within. Therefore, that can sometimes manifest or individuals can sometimes create it as difficulties or eruptations from the skin itself. The animals, in a sense, have done you a service by taking this on. Now, the idea of the poison to cure it is an entirely different scenario and has something to do with the fact that one individual would think that in order to do something which is beneficial, they would need do something which is not. And that is as far as we will go with that. And I think that... You tell me. <laughs> okay, could you say that one more time? In order to do something... To do something that's beneficial... The idea of that the only way to get rid of this skin disorder is to bathe in poison, which you generally assume to be a negative, right. toxic idea. There is the underlying idea within you, and again, this will click at some point, perhaps in the near future, that in order to create the preferred reality, you first need to, all right, eat some crow. Wow. Huh. And that is an idea that is still within you. No need to invalidate it. But by owning it, then you can change it. And that is one of the ideas that you still utilize to hold yourself back. Hmm. Okay. I feel like I want to ask you one more question about that. Go right ahead. I don't have one. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> then perhaps we will share again. Feel free. Okay, I ha they have two more baths to get. Um, I have two more baths to give them. Uh, is there is there anything I can do to help them? I mean, I feel like I'm killing them. You are not, no. Okay. Thank you very much. And to you. Shut it. You're alive. Alive. Male. Alarm. No, right here. <laughs> here? Ace. Uh, well, it strikes me as so coincidental is Teresa sharing her story. Of this past week, I have been in nature sort of digging fence posts and things and, and collected some poison ivy upon my skin, mm -hmm. which I've never had an experience of a skin irritation before in my, my in this incarnation. Uh, so using what you provided her as a stepping stone for my own understanding, that this can be sort of uh, exposing my own belief systems well, to some degree, in your particular instance, there is the addition of things you hold within yourself that are literally erupting now to the surface. So begin to look at what areas you are not looking at and you are denying. That is your strongest opportunity at this point for change. Well, there's been a good deal of that in terms of my belief systems about my own wealth and my access to wealth and my judgments that I have about wealthy people. Well, do understand that you have hit, as you say, the nail squarely or roundly or triangularly on the head. <laughs> For the idea is many times individuals will have conflicting primary beliefs. And here is an example. One primary belief. I wish to have all the money I can. Another primary belief. All people with money are jerks. <laughs> a third primary belief, I don't wish to be a jerk. Yes. <laughs> Therefore, you can now look at the fact that individuals are the way they are because of who they are. It is not the symbols around them that determine how they are. And it is not that you must, by convention, by obtaining the things that are representative of the amount of abundance you are willing to flow through you, that that means you need denigrate your person or that you need become a miser. So many of the ideas surrounding how you feel about people with money, and you will have many opportunities now that this is brought to the surface to see many people with a lot of money and see how you react to them. This goes across the board for anyone present in this interaction. For if you do truly believe that you will become 
egomaniacal, selfish, self-serving, step on the heads of others. And that is the only thing that always happens to everyone when they get money. You can see very clearly where these beliefs conflict and are creating a seeming lack of abundance. So therefore, look at where this issue comes up. If you see someone driving in your limousine, see what you think. Do you think, oh, how nice. I would like one of those. Or do you think, what must he have done to get that? <laughs> do you understand? Or yes. Indeed. Therefore, you can now transform it. Find where you do have these perspectives and do not settle for them any longer. Acknowledge them and then redefine it. Well, it feels as though my background is changing Ace. with this interaction. Oh, yes. And as you change who you are in any present moment, your past literally changes as does your future. Obviously, if you change who you are in the present, your future will change from the future that you would have had being the old you, so to speak. But this goes in both directions. You also create a new significance to your past. You pluck from what you perceive to be your past the instances that have allowed you to be who you are right now. So the past changes, so does the future, yes. Well, it always seems as though I've lived with wealthy areas around wealthy people without wealth myself. But what have you thought about them? Well, I've had that is a, the point. a series of judgments, many of which you've hit the head, nail on the head with. <laughs> I mean, like these jerks and what, what are they doing to do that? And Now, understand this is your liberation. Uh -huh. This is your ability to trans... Also understand very often in regards to abundance... Individuals, as they quote-unquote acquire seemingly more abundance, then seem to have less in common with the individuals that they have quote-unquote grown up with. And therefore, there is also the consideration of, will I have any friends or will I need to hang out with the jerks? Yes. <laughs> so therefore, again, understanding they are not jerks, that if you believe that, you will most likely not wish to become that. Mm -hmm. So you can redefine that particular perspective and point of view. Thank you very much for that. I have one additional All right. thing. In, in the process of this week also, I've been digging these uh, fence post holes. And in process, in this area of the country, we have a lot of rocks. And so every <laughs> couple inches I go down, I hit a rock, which then I have to struggle with and get a crowbar out or whatever and, and get this rock out of the hole. Now, last night I had a dream where I was uh, showing some woman where I had a, uh, I, I dug these big boulders out of the ground and, and underneath I had a spacecraft. <laughs> <laughs> and I was easily able to move these very large boulders. I, I'm not sure exactly how I did that, but it was easier than I thought it would be. And it seemed to unveil something of uh, considerable what I would like, you know, what I would prefer. Well, ironically, by grounding to your reality, that is the way that you are most likely to interact with other civilizations. So perhaps this is symbolic of that as well. But one question, what is it you are fencing out? Well, in, in this position, I'm doing this for a client oh, all right. who wishes to conceal some old cars he has from his neighbor who is trying to sell his house, who has complained about the having to look at these old cars. Oh, all right. So I'm not sure if that is my issue or, or not. Primarily, though, the digging, the rocks, the earth is, again, the grounding aspect. Grounding and understanding that head in the clouds is all right, but it is the feet on the ground which moves the reality. The feet on the ground that transforms your particular manifestations. It is always the action step, again, that literally midwives the energy into matter. So therefore, get cracking. So my willingness to get in there and participate and do this thing, make, which does make it easier when I do that, is seemingly what I'm, I'm seeking to learn. Nice. And are learning, not and seeking to, learning. That I'm learning, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. And to you for your willingness to continue to expand. Shedding. Elon. Ace. Greetings. And to you. I'd like to focus on the environment 
uh, June 2, this coming week, uh, at Rio in South America, <clears throat> there'll be roughly uh, 160 nations participating in a world summit mm -hmm. focusing on the condition of the uh, environment of our planet. Ace. And uh, over the various sessions, I've heard both Bashar and you indicate that the uh, Earth, Mother Earth, has a uh, more self-healing capability than uh, we realize. Ace, but understand, this does not mean that you cannot cause great destruction. This does not mean that you, as a society, should you choose, cannot blow holes in your ozone, shall we say, destroy your rainforest, pollute your air, pollute your water. It is still an option of your civilization to do so. What we were simply sharing for those with the concern of the overall Earth was that there was some more capability than understood for the regeneration. But that is entirely different than the personal issues of each individual getting in touch with their own particular relationship to the planet itself and your willingness on your own personal level to begin in whatever way you are able from whatever is available to you in any given moment to be the embodiment of an individual only willing to, shall we say, dovetail your activities to be within environmental integrity. That is what will change the entire planet as well. For it will take each individual to do so within themselves, then becoming that vibration, then attracting other individuals around them of like mind, as we had shared, congregate, shall we say, background other individuals. And this will have a ripple, literally a rippling effect that will spread around the whole planet. So we do not mean in that sense to say that it is not your responsibility, but simply in that sense that there was more to your planet than met your eye. I've had to resist the temptation from these previous brief inputs to just say, well, just relax, uh, don't worry about it. Mother Earth can heal any damage we do. Ace, but that is not how we meant it. We were simply allowing you to know that your scientists have only scratched the surface in how your planet operates and rejuvenates. We did not mean to suggest that the issues surrounding the idea of the pollution of your planet were not of paramount importance both to yourselves and to your entire planet. And again, remind you that your own individual willingness to embody environmental integrity is what will bring you the result rippling out and seeing it in other individuals as well. We did not in that sense share it so that you would become complacent, no. That's what I decided on my own and I appreciate your confirming and reflecting back to me what I really had decided already. Uh, I appreciate that. Well, we thank you for deciding it without needing to check in. Can you elaborate at all, though, on Mother Earth's capability to heal herself on, on pollution? Well, again, perhaps for the purposes of continuing along these lines, we wish to communicate your personal ability to heal your planet. So therefore, when you find yourself doing something as simple as, shall we say, throwing something, shall we say, environmentally unsound into the trash, your willingness to do that is mirrored and mimicked in those around you. Your willingness to begin to not do that, to not settle for less than complete environmental integrity in each and every one of your actions is what will change your relationship to that planet and allow it by, again, rippling out to heal itself without consistently being re-injured. As, as, um, so your personal ability is 100% in whatever way you are able to demonstrate that type of integrity. And you will then also be an example for others to see. This World Summit, again, offers another wonderful opportunity to accelerate unification uh, of our various countries. Uh, do you read the energies as being sort of productive and successful in this World Summit? To some degree. There will perhaps be a bit less productivity than many would hope, but the idea is that the issues will come to the surface. And it is very many 
times the issues coming to the surface of the masses all at once with the opportunity again with the media on your planet at this time, which is more of the idea. So things which are not settled to the satisfaction of, shall we say, the majority of individuals now will give the majority of individuals the opportunity to speak their voice. So therefore, it will be very positive, even if the particular agreements are quite minimal. But there will perhaps be some major agreements, yes. One last question. On Esasani, is there any form of pollution and is it a problem? Can you talk about that? No and no and yes, we just did. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. And to you. Shutting. Hello. Over there. Thank you. Hi. Greetings. Um, yeah, to follow the environmental thing up, I, on a personal level, I get, I get really angry at other people when I see them, you know, using something, using a detergent or using some sort of product that is not good. And I, are you able in an integrated and loving way to whatever degree is available to you to communicate this? That is the only service in that instance that you can be first be a living example of the thing you wish to, in that sense, have other people see, and then be willing to communicate, even though you may perceive that is not their particular perspective, in a loving enough way that they can actually then hear you. Yeah. Well, I, I said it to one guy, and he was, he was a guy bigger than me in a bigger truck. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't take it too well. Will not matter how big the truck is if the communication is unconditionally loving. It will be appreciated for what it is. Yeah, because I, I feel like there's so many people in, on this planet that are just misinformed and uneducated. And I don't know if I'm like... But you can use myself. them in the following way. We do not mean manipulate them, but use the fact that each time you become aware that somebody is that way, that that reinforces that you do not prefer to be that way and therefore reinforces your willingness to not act that way. For then you become a living example, a beacon. Others can see that your alternative way is just as possible. Then it is far easier when you are the embodiment of that idea to make that communication in a loving way for although you would prefer your perspective, you are willing to validate their perspective and understand they have the right and reason to choose it. Okay. I just, it's frustration for me. I get angry, then I get sad. And I, you know, I do the best I can, yet I live near the water and I can look in the water every morning and see the slick. Ace, but you can also, if you will be as astute, look around and see many individuals picking up the trash as well. So where is your attention falling? And is it falling on the people who are continuing to do that? Perhaps can reflect to yourself to what degree you still do it. Perhaps minor, but to whatever degree, perhaps that is what you are actually judging. Okay. Does that help? Yeah, it does. I'll try to look at it differently, and it's, I will look at it differently. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, I have the podium here. Uh, I had a, I had some dream questions that I just like to ask. I, I had dreamt about you. You, Elon. Nice. No, we were in an encounter like this, which was nice. And I, for some reason, I wanted. I asked you if it was okay if I had an interaction with someone else you know, in the room. Nice. And I'm not sure what that means. And it was, I felt like I was breaking some sort of barrier. The point is that there are others in our civilization. There is, shall we say, one particular being that you can communicate with directly. That is not me, but quite similar. You are beginning to now open up to recognize this idea. Yeah, I wanted to include the other person, Ace. Uh, and I wanted to ask you if that was okay. Always all right, for from our perspective, you are growing, expanding, and boldly being who you are. Therefore, there will always be a matching reflection, a mirrored reflection, and from our end, this takes the form of another individual. Yeah, because it's not just the conversation between us, but between the three of us. Ace. I wanted to complete the triangle, I guess. Did you have a good time? Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure how it turned out, though. <laughs> you will be. Yeah. And um, and also, I'm where I'm living in this in my house. 
Um, I live downstairs. Um, the woman who owns the house lives above me. And um, I've been having a great time living there. I, I moved there about three months ago. And uh, it's a very peaceful place, very tranquil and not nice. And um, I'm picking up a lot of her husband's passed away, and I'm wondering what's going on about that. It's like, I feel like he's lingering around. I don't know if it's... In a sense. He's not wandering the halls, but is still strongly connected to her. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you most likely will not hear any chains rattling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm not afraid of that. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's okay. Because I do feel a presence, and I'm, I'm wondering if you, there was anything else. May we make a simple suggestion? Yes. Say hello. I do. All right. Any time in that sense you have a guest, treat them as a guest. Yeah, I do that. That's great. Okay, great. <laughs> and then... And by the way, we thank you, and so does he. Oh, yeah? Ace, perhaps sometimes you will validate his presence more than she. So he hasn't moved on then? Has he moved on? For the time being, shall we say, he is engaged in non-physical reality, but very strongly connected so to speak, as a guide to that individual. <laughs> well, I, then I, at this point, I'd like to share um, that this lawnmower story I had the other day was a little dangerous, but I was... <laughs> How exciting! I, I should explain more, but it's like I was using his lawnmower and it, it broke, the blade broke and half went flinging out. And, uh, it was pretty dangerous. I was pretty scared, but I was thinking of him at the time. And I thought, oh my God, I shouldn't be cutting his lawn. You know? Oh, no, no, no. And by the way, there is one other communication. Nothing personal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you were not hurt. No, no it's been great. And I, it's great. Okay. Um... So, and then real quickly, in my dream, again, I've been dreaming of dolphins, which is nice. Ace, I've never done that. you are interacting with intraterrestrials, yes. Uh, yeah. And it's like, I, I was listening to a past, a, an old tape, and, um, and uh, there was a question about other channels on the planet, and you mentioned one dreamer. Ace, in an upcoming interaction, there will be direct communication from that source. <laughs> through this channel in these interactions in an upcoming interaction Great. perhaps much to the chagrin of the channel <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I'm here I'll be there you will be oh great yeah because that's what I was picking up is that in my dream that they were water skiers you know many women water skiing <laughs> oh very interesting <laughs> many women what turned are they into dolphins <laughs> and I was swimming with these dolphins and water skiing or whatever it was great Ace. They were dolphin consciousness the whole time. In a sense, you were relating to them as equals, thereby their appearance as humans, as often when we interact in dream realities with you, you will perceive us as human simply because you are interacting with us entirely as an equal. But then the distinction was made for identification purposes, and you were literally swimming in their backyard. So what does this mean to me? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You have, shall we say, a particular connection to that species, which is, again, from our perspective, one of the two intelligent species upon your planet. Therefore, if you are interested in extraterrestrial, extra-dimensional communications, start in your own backyard. It is accessible. You can actually physically proximate to them. You can interact with them. You can jump right in. Mm. And you will find your willingness to play in their particular playground. You will experience a new type of emotional communication. For they do communicate tell empathically. So right now I can just continue it on a dream level. If you wish, you can always invite that and they will always respond. But perhaps you will now keep your eyes open for the physical opportunity for it will arrive. Really? If you wish it to, it is up to you. No one will force you to have too much fun. <laughs> Sounds great. I'm, just, I'm not sure where it's going to come from, but I haven't planned on that. Well, how exciting! Yes. <laughs> Upon our planet, if one individual approaches another and says, how are you doing? How are things going? And that individual says, not as I expected, we always come back with, congratulations. That is the joy of creation. Not exactly knowing what to expect, but always knowing it will be ecstatic. 
Great. Will that do? That's it for now. Oh, yeah. Female. Thank you. Oh, I'm Ace. Okay. Hi. Um, Greetings. Uh, I hadn't said anything before, but I was going to ask you too about dolphins. Um, I had had a dream recently, and uh, I had seen three dolphins, and Sheila was with me, and uh, it was it was really wonderful. Um, but I was surprised when I woke up. I was really relaxed, really comfortable and happy, but I didn't communicate or I do not have any recollection of communicating with the dolphins in the dream. And I was wondering if you could tell me if I'm doing that telepathically or not bringing it back. Or well, understand this again. The medium through which these communications take place is what you call emotion, energy motion. So therefore, since you interpret it through an emotional filter, when you wake up and then analyze it through mental means, it can simply appear no conversation took place. If you will play around a bit, perhaps close your eyes, relax, take a few breaths, and allow yourself to recreate the scene in your mind, in your imagination, and focus upon the feelings then you will translate some of that communication. But it is not the grasping through mental means that will allow you to become aware of the communication. It is the feeling and your willingness to translate that feeling, but first recreate it. Very simple. Feeling was wonderful. Oh. Nice. So play around with that. And while you are recreating that feeling, which then literally means you are the vibration of that feeling, Many of the communications can then filter down and make some sense analytically. But first must be, shall we say, invoked emotionally. All right? All right. We um, think. I was wondering also, um, all my life I've had dreams underwater or living in cities above the water or cities underneath the water. Ace. And also dreams of swimming underwater. And even a uh, few times I do scuba dive. But, uh, Ace. but this is a twofold connection. One would be Atlantean, shall we say, in terms of being connected to that particular civilization in many lives, but also understand something that we have not discussed very often, but which does occur from time to time. Less often now than in your, shall we say, historic past, but this is why you are feeling that. Because of the similarity in sentient consciousness, self-reflective thinking consciousness between cetaceans, what you call dolphin and whales, and humans, you in that sense, particularly in more of the Atlantean frame of your history, directly from time to time would reincarnate as a dolphin. And also from time to time, particular dolphins would reincarnate as humans. Now they are primarily dolphins and you are primarily humans in this particular dimension of experience, but there was the overlapping, the overcrossing, the cross exploration, if you will. So you in that sense have done that many times. Oh yes, you can in that sense by simply recreating those feelings Create many flashes, many memories. You are very strongly connected to this, as are several individuals present. Thank you for calling on me. I um, Oh, thank you for sharing the gift of who you are with us. That's wonderful that you could even sense that I was going to discuss that. That's... We thank you for your willingness to be bold. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> At this timing. We will pause for a short break of 10 to 15 minutes of your counting. We will resume contact with Theodorable at that time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll say, continue. Shedding, Theodorable. Ace, greetings. Uh, before my question, I must say that my month has been absolutely wonderful filled with, with unexpected delights. Just today, I had uh, perhaps a hundred just very, very wonderful interchanges with my environment. So it's becoming more and more difficult for me to perceive negativity. Well, how exciting. It is, it's wonderful. Uh, Do not worry, you will not lose it and still have some awareness of it, being that it is an option in this reality. 
as we have shared many times, as your awareness expands, you will become more aware of both. But we thank you for being willing to embody the idea of only needing to experience the positive while perhaps still being aware of the negative. And as you do begin to merely only choose positive manifestations, shall we say eventually there will seem to be a diminution in the amount of negativity as well. For it will simply exist within your totality, but have no relevance to the positive choices you are making. Do proceed. Uh, uh, terrific. Yes, the, the question um, I have uh, regards the changing of primary beliefs. Uh, in our civilization, at one point or another these days, uh, many human beings are um, faced with the, the opportunity to believe that they are the creator. Uh, one minute, you know, the individual is the man on the street, the ordinary Joe, and uh, the next he's saying, I am that I am. You know, I am the all that is, the supreme being. <clears throat> Quite a large jump. Nice, but when you do make, in that sense, that jump, so to speak, you do not then invalidate in any way, shape, or form the choice of average Joe. For it is a valid choice, just like any other choice. It is a valid expression, just like any other expression. Mm -hmm. Well, the question is, how does, well, when, when one decides finally to take that jump, to adopt the new belief, you know, I did, many others did, it, it seemed to me that the chorus was very slow in showing up for the new drama. Uh, when one decides to be the creator, how does one act that out? Well, first of all, by using all your creations, even the ones you created, from a negative perspective. One example in your particular instance is you very highly understood and perhaps, shall we say, related to our earlier description of on the one hand wishing to have much abundance and on the other hand having a particular judgmental attitude toward those that already do. Did this not hit home with you as well? Sure did. So therefore, these are the ideas. As each one of these things comes to your awareness, rejoice, for you are now in the position to transform it. And only once you are aware of it can you transform it. So the awarenesses themselves are a joy. The awarenesses themselves can now bring with them the gratitude and appreciation for everything it took to get you to this point. And your willingness to relabel, redefine the things that are incongruous and create an unpreferred effect is now acting like the creator never denying any of your creations, and using the ones you do deny, using even the denial to recognize you no longer have to do that. So it is a consistent attitude. It is not a fleeting, shall we say, approach. Always, under any circumstances, you are now acting like an owner. And owners act like, well, I own this, what's it for? Well, I chose this. Now, why did I choose it? This is an owner. Was there something specific you are seeking? No, this, this, this indicates uh, on a, an emotional level as, as the optimal response for... All right. Now, also understand that we did discuss last time equal explorations. Is there something you wish, in that sense, to extend from that conversation? Being that you did not perceive we addressed what it is you were asking, however, from our perspective, we most certainly did. Oh, in, the, in our last, uh, in our last mm -hmm. discourse, Ex the, um, the issue now slips my mind. So well, it was... Why would one choose a negative experience versus a positive one? Right. And our perception of the way the question was asked is that why would anyone choose the negative 
invalidates the negative as a choice. Perhaps you do not prefer it, perhaps it is no longer relevant to who you are, but our main point was that it is an equal exploration, perhaps for someone else. Yes, well at that particular moment I had absolutely no judgment on the matter. Uh, I, was, I was looking at it from the point of view of one who believes he was a member of the Orion, a negative civilization, uh, why would I have chosen that? And my personal intuition was that I simply regarded that path as more challenging. Well, also, it allows this path to stand out in relief. Yes. For when you explore extreme negativity, shall we say, in keeping some memory of it, you then have, shall we say, a fresh appreciation for the positivity. Mm -hmm. So it enhances the positive experience, even though that may sound like a paradox, by first having chosen the negative. Now, you do not have to do it that way. That is only one way, but it is as valid a way as any other. And the negative experience and exploration is equal in quality to any other exploration. So perhaps you can say, why would anyone choose that? Because it's an option, and that option will appeal to a certain style of exploration. Well, okay, That's, uh, th that answers my question fully. You know, I thank, I thank you very much. It, it strikes me as remarkably interesting that, you know, I personally could have started as a sort of Darth Vader type. <laughs> <laughs> well, how exciting. You are always a character to us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Will that be all? Yes. Thank you. And we thank you as well. Trust your timing, even within these interactions. Yes, I learned. Oh, thank you. Sharing. Uh -huh. Female venue. Um, two questions. Number one. One of them is about my dog. Um, why is he in my life? And uh, can you shed any kind of light on that? Um, he is or she is in your life by choice, first of all. And second of all, understand that animal consciousness, though fully their own consciousness, are a mirror of your particular consciousness, mirrors of aspects of your consciousness. It was, shall we say, co-chosen to experience and explore this style of reality together from slightly different perspectives. And again, at the same time, the symbol of animal consciousness is a mirror or reflection of portions of your own consciousness. Also, they can reincarnate as you do, and from life to life, or in, shall we say, several instances of lives, share with you again and again. I guess it, it, translating that into more practical terms. Um, oh, practical. All right. I find him extremely difficult to handle. My, my son is attached to him. I'd like very much to find a home for him. Um, but there's a part of me that seems unable to make that happen. Then most obviously that symbol is reflecting many ideas to you. And it will always be up to you to choose what you will do. And nothing will denigrate the relationship that you have. But it will give you an opportunity to make decisions and firmly stick by them no matter what they are. Interesting what will challenge. you do, by the way? What will I do? Ace. Probably nothing at the moment. All right, that is something in and of itself. But you will perhaps find that you will begin to formulate particular approaches. Simply trust them. Trust the timing of them as well. But perhaps you can also look at what is quote-unquote difficult about quote-unquote handling that animal as one of the issues as well. In terms of why do you have such a button to be pushed? Is that of service? I, I think it will be. I'm sure mm -hmm. it is. It's... Oh, all right. Is there something else you wish to discuss? Yeah, I have a question about... I'm coming up with... I'm finding out that I have very little memory of um, a lot of things that happened in my life. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the present is not a result of the past. And you truly, in any given moment, know what you need to know 
to completely and fully be in that moment. Now, what this then boils down to, it is a matter of trust. If you can simply trust when you need to know something, you will. And as well, relax into the fact that when you do not, you do not need to do so. And there is something else right in front of you to look at that is perhaps more relevant toward furthering your goals, so to speak. You can then use even that. But understand, as you sever your relationship to your past, your relationship to your future, and live right here, right now, utilizing the only experiential moment, the now moment, the relevance of that perceived past simply changes. And therefore, there is not the need to quote-unquote remember, which is actually recreating in that given moment that particular idea. So when the memories are there, are available, use them. When they are not, pay extra special attention to what is right in front of you. For if the memory is not there, there is something else you can look at. And it is a matter of trust in that and then very wide-eyedingly looking around. Does that make sense? Yes. Therefore, you then reinterpret the effect of it, you change the effect of it, and you will find as you begin to live in the now moment flawlessly, so to speak, you will lose, shall we say, much of what you consider to be conventional memory, for it will simply have no relevance to the moment. And you will always know in that moment what you need, which will not be those memories. You have already experienced that. Well, that's interesting because um, that, that's a positive way of looking at it. It's just a little... Did you expect anything less? No, of course not. <laughs> but when I have conversations with acquaintances, friends, and they relate to things that happened in the past and in my school years or later on, and I, and I act as if I wasn't there and they tell me I was, oh, you know, it's a little disconcerting. Why is it disconcerting? Why is it simply not what it is? Allow them to share it with you. If you do not remember it, they are now sharing it with you. You can, in a sense, relive it at that point. But if you do not remember it, trust it. Take what they have to offer and perhaps share with them that you do not remember it, but you believe them. So you're saying that part of this non-remembering is part of my growing into my living in the present and dealing? Absolutely. Because that's absolutely where I am. Absolutely. Okay. And also, again, when you insist on remembering it, you are assuming that it is extraneous, that it is not there as a memory. And you are maintaining focus on something which is not relevant to the moment, which then, so to speak, distracts you from what is. So it always gives you an opportunity to refocus, reground yourself into what's right in front of you. This can also translate when you lose your keys, so to speak. Um, along with the memory, if, if I, although you say that we, we don't need to go back to the past, I'm, I'm finding that there is a part of my past that somehow needs to be dealt with. Only if you say so. But when you say so, yes, this is true. So in other words, it, it, it relates to having massages and, and, and body memories coming out of when I was five years old, which I wouldn't tell you right now I choose to experience or go back to, and yet it seems they keep coming up. And what do you do with them when they come up? Do you use them in a positive way? Do you come to particular recognitions? Do you make particular decisions about how you will proceed with that knowledge, thereby using it? Yeah, it's like then you have used it, and it has served its purpose, so to speak. It will then transform. But if, if I could tell my, if I could believe that I don't need that to transform, then I wouldn't go through that physiological... Well, things may come up, oh. but what the trust there is, is in the timing that it has come up. That that is the timing to look at it, to reintegrate it from your new perspective, which will seem to reintegrate it rather than simply add a little detail to it, put it back in the closet, and have it seeming to come around and plague you throughout your life. You use it in that moment according to that perfect timing, transform it by allowing the symbol to deliver its intended message. Thereby, it transforms. It no longer has a reason to hang around. If you deny what the symbol has to say, that is why it then seems to come back in a slightly different form. Great. Is this helping? Yes. Oh.
Will that do? Yes, thank you. Oh, thank you. Fime. Yes, Alon. Hi. Greetings. Um, well, there's a couple of things. The first thing is, um, are you aware of the contact I had with the Association of Worlds? Ace. Okay. Well, the question really is kind of like, why first do I have more interactions with that kind of, you know, beings in my sleep and not bring them back? You know, not bring it into there has been perhaps more than you have perceived as a memory, but it will be always your choice to continue to interact with that or not. There are specific connections within the overall connection to an association, which represents many hundreds of civilizations. There are specific connections within that, but you are utilizing, validating the existence of the association with those symbols. Okay. All right. Part of my question is why would I bring something into my, you know, why would I remember something and not something else? Is it that I find it to me more relevant to my life now or is it yes. that that Absolutely. message is both? It is simply more relevant, as we have shared earlier. As you change your beliefs and begin to act according to the new beliefs, the relevance of things changes. And now, because there has always been some sense on your part that there was the openness on your end for interaction and other, shall we say, external, so to speak, entities to interact with, you are now, shall we say, introducing yourself to some of your options. We have loosely discussed the channeling of the energy you speak of as Gaia or the Earth, but there is, shall we say, other opportunities as well. Um, part of the remembering thing, I guess, is it that certain things don't fit into my awake belief system, or is it... Most of interacting with the association at this time in your planetary and societal development may not translate very well. For there is still, shall we say, a hub of limitation in your overall societal approach. And there is, shall we say, limitlessness in the approach of the association. Complete integration. So therefore, that particular difference in approach will not translate very well into this sleeping, or shall I say, waking dream reality until you change your vibration in the waking dream reality sufficiently enough to be an embodiment of it. Then it can come through you, so to speak. Okay. They're tuning yourself up. <laughs> okay. uh, my other question is really kind of a, a shift, but I was watching this movie while well, I happened to have watched a movie about um, this family who had spirits or had a haunted house that they moved into. And then someone said to me, well, isn't it strange how the people that you hear about who live in these haunted houses a lot of times tend to be religious, like in a really organized religious sense. And then I realized that, like at least what I'm aware of, it seems like when you have these haunted house settings, they always have to have like... Um, exorcisms or these priests and a lot of times these people are really religious and could you explain that Ace, very often incorporated into some of the religions on your planet is a fear of that idea again fear is believing a reality you don't prefer is most likely and is the same as saying you believe that is most likely so therefore individuals through fear can attract particular reflections to themselves simply to tell themselves that they are fearing so they can choose something else, but they don't get that as the message and they concentrate on the external, so to speak, symbol. Now, this can literally be other entities, as you say, in between live souls, but it can also many times be what you sometimes label poltergeist phenomena that is actually resulting from, uh, shall we say, the people involved and not happening to them, but from them. That is very common. And shall we say in most of your poltergeist phenomena, that is the direct spillover energy of the very being experiencing the phenomenon. Okay, so maybe because they're, they believe in that like polarization of like good and evil, that kind of thing. And if they fear the evil, again, it is the same as saying they expect it. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And that is not coming from a position of power 
and shall we say being in tandem with all that is. That is feeling separate from all that is, perhaps you can say cast out of the kingdom and therefore needing to protect themselves from the crocodiles, so to speak. Is that all? Yeah, that is. Thank you very much. We thank you as well. Shut it. Yeah. Ace. Um, I, I feel like I've already asked this question because I thought about it a long, long time ago. But if I did, I forgot the answer. So. <laughs> well, how exciting. You can rediscover it all over again. Okay. <laughs> Seeing how we're... By the way, all a question is, is a statement within you phrased in such a way where it is, shall we say, searching for outer validation. You always, in the posing of the question, have the answer. Again, we remind you, when someone gives you the answer and you say, that's right, how did you know? You had the answer all along. So when we say to you, you already know, we are not being facetious. You do, but proceed. Okay. Uh, seeing how we're the creators of our own reality, um, what is the purpose then of prayer? And then how does prayer work? Well, in a sense, you still create a separation. And sometimes we'll even speak of connecting to your higher self as though you are separate from your higher self. So prayer in that sense to whatever it is you are quote unquote connecting to, usually from a sense or feeling of separation, is the speaking or output to that source, whatever it is, all that is, your higher self. Meditation in that sense is listening for the answer. So when people pray for something to happen, how does that benefit them? It will simply depend entirely upon their belief system. It can function in many ways. Is there a specific example that you seek? No, I was just wondering the dynamics of it because praying for something, it seems to me that you're actually putting it out of your reach. And oh, yes. For it too. In that sense, that is very often the case. And individuals, again, will create what they believe. So if they believe that all that is or God is external and that all they need to do is ask the external source and the external source will deliver it, they can still create the effect of the deliverance. However, we remind you that you are the source. Okay. And therefore, you can perhaps say that prayer in its purest form is talking to yourself. Okay, good. Thanks. Um, one other question. Uh, as you know, the cat's name is Shivai, and uh, no one seems to know how to spell that. Do you, do you help us out? One moment. Do you again understand that we have no language per se any longer? Our language is remnant, and this will simply be an interpretation, which may actually differ from channel to channel. One moment. S-H-I-V-A-I. A-I? Ace. Oh, great, thank you. Unless you wish something else. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, thank you. We thank you. Shedding, female back there. Elan. Ace. I've, uh, Greetings, greetings. by the way. I'm Lucille and I've not spoken with you before, although I've been present many times. We have interacted. Yes. yes. Um, I wanted to discuss the um, tendency of the breakdown of family and marriage in our society. All right. It is not in that sense that unobvious why this would occur, but do proceed. Um, I wondered if it is actually something to fear or whether perhaps it's going in a very positive direction, this breakdown. Now, our perception is that it is going in a positive direction, but our perception of the source is the quote unquote breakdown of self. For in a sense, many individuals will only believe that they can transform or change to that which they prefer if they first virtually tear down all that they were. We also remind you that the perspective that you assume when you attract a relationship determines the nature of the relationship. And very often, or most often, shall we say, in your society, 
individuals will attract relationships out of a sense of need, which pre-assumes being incomplete. Therefore, all the relationships will then only be a reflection of that feeling of incompleteness. You cannot escape that feeling till you have, shall we say, dealt with it and integrated it. So therefore, the nature of the relationships very often are from a sense of completing yourself, which pre-assumes you are not complete. And since this then occurs in the following way, whereby individuals, for instance, believing that they wish to attract a mate to make them complete, will begin to say what they wish the mate, what they think the mate wishes to hear, rather than who they are. And perhaps they can keep this up for some period of time, but eventually when they get comfortable, they begin to, shall we say, get a little tired of settling for that. The other individual is going on an assumption of who the first individual is and is generally quite shocked when the first individual then decides, well, I'm going to be who I am now. This other individual has another assumptive perception of who you are and things seem to break apart. Why this is positive is now individuals can begin to nurture that primary relationship with themselves, to come to these realizations. You need not, by the way, break up your family to do so. You can come to that realization and then have your, shall we say, chosen mate then reflect that to you, if that is to be. Either they will match you on that frequency or it will be most obvious that they will not. And you will find, shall we say, someone else who will represent and reflect back to you their feelings of self-completeness as well as your own. Why is it so difficult uh, to make commitments now for people to commit to each other? Well, because individuals will not commit to who they are and therefore cannot by convention commit to anything else until they first reconcile their primary relationship, which is total self-commitment, but at the same time, total commitment of service to others as well. But not service at cost of self and not service to self at the cost of service to others. A balance. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Shut it. Ace. Um, I, I, the word totality has been coming up for me a lot. Well, how integrated? <laughs> no, and I'm wondering, can you define that for me? Is that possible or is that kind of a... Well, again, it may be arbitrary depending upon the usage. But to us, totality can represent many things. One thing that springs to mind is all that is itself, the totality, all that is, nothing left out. Okay, it's pretty direct. Is there something specific in terms of how you are using it? Well, I've been, I'm working on an idea and it, uh, I thought of that for the title. Oh my. So I'll leave it at that. Well, that leaves nothing out. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good idea. Um, it is. Yes. Um, I was wondering also about your, your fourth density. Do you have past lives? Yes. But they are, shall we say, reincarnationally connected to my own society. And we retain more of an awareness, shall we say, between lives as well as the ability in any given moment to recall any aspect of a past life, however, only when we need to, which is rarely. Mm -hmm. Again, we always know what we need to know, when we need to know it, and the converse of this is if we don't know it, we simply assume we should look at something else, or we would look at something else. So those lives are only within the fourth density? No, there are others as well. But we assume that you meant reincarnationally within our same society. Remember that you are all as well as we are all eternal. This means you truly have no beginning and no ending. This means that wherever you are, though it may seem like the totality of your being, it is but a wink of your eye of your soul. So therefore, we have other connections prior. We will perhaps, you can say, have future connections as well. Our future, so to speak, lives, in a sense, you can say, are represented by the star system Sirius, Sirius Consciousness. Our relationship to that system is similar to your relationship to us. So, do you cry? No. You don't know it. You don't but we feel do sadness. 
No, we feel extreme ecstasy, which perhaps you can say can bring tears, but a different style. I see. So, so... Perhaps more apropos. There are tears of joy, but there is no crying of sadness. There is quite a bit of laughter. That's nice. That sounds fun. Ace, it is. So, um, just for the... We, we do this past life regression here, you know, to, therapeutically. Ace. And I know you, you say that it's, you know, not to focus so much on past lives. Well, but if yeah. it is interesting to you, by all means, explore it. What we share is that in any given life, in fact, in any given moment, you always have everything you need in that moment and anything else can enhance it, but is not necessary to proceed. This makes each moment as well as each life self-sustaining and self-complete and total. So do you think it's a healthy thing to do? I mean, to help in this life? to get Allowing your curiosity to be valid, exploring your curiosity, but remaining grounded in what is in your life is our suggestion of what would be integrated. But anything else, again, is your exploration and your choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, and one final comment question. It's about cigarette smoking. Oh, right. What do you suggest about that if... Um, if it works for you, do it. If it doesn't, don't, period. The idea is it can symbolize many things. And perhaps the question is, what does it mean to you? What are your beliefs about it? Do you have incongruous belief systems where on the one hand you believe it is bad for you and on the other hand you continue to do it? Or do you understand that you have attracted it as a symbol and that the smoke in a sense is symbolic of the etheric interactions, the etheric portion of your consciousness. Very often individuals who partake of that symbol, not always, but very often, have past life connections to Native American Indian or Southern or Central American Indian usage of that symbol in that way as a meditative tool. Hmm, that's interesting. But does it help? <laughs> no, it, it's, it's very interesting to me because those two things have collided lately for me. Not oh. collided, it's been lovingly colliding. But but um, <laughs> that, this vice I'm talking about is um, coming into my life a little bit. And I, I'm i not pleased with it. And I'm looking for a way to... Um, I feel like it's filling an emptiness for me. All right. Well, understand that you do have everything within you. So therefore, if you are using it as a reliance on an external symbol to make you complete, you will perhaps disappoint yourself. If you are simply exploring something according to your excitement, perhaps you can allow that to play out. If you are exploring something due to your anxiety, then look at that as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shedding. If an extraterrestrial were to manifest in our reality for purposes of contact and something were to happen, could he become entrapped in this dimension? Tis already happened. Okay. Would that then mean that his existence in the other dimension would cease? In a sense, yes. Thank you. But it has happened quite a few times. Right. Thank you. Hello. Ace. Does perception work such that a being can perceive out of choice that which lies in uh, relatively lower uh, dimensions, but uh, only occasionally can glimpse what's above him? In general, you will stay focused in your particular exploration. In general. Shall we say there is more of an ability to retrace the steps you have taken? Again, this is arbitrary according to a timeline existence and a bit more, shall we say, difficult to grasp that which you have not yet expanded to, again, colloquially speaking. Did that translate? Yes. Uh, let me ask it another way. Is, is it easier to explain? Is it then easier to explore experientially that which lays below you as opposed to that which is above you? And I'm not using the most complete answer for this would be no. 
because as you move further away in any direction from the density that you are exploring, it is less relevant to you, it exists within you, but its relevance decreases. You would, shall we say, sensorially speaking, seem to have more of an ability to comprehend where you have been than where you are going. For you can say from the perspective of where you're at now, so to speak, you have not developed those senses yet. From the overall totality of your being, however, this is different. Now, when I perceive a rock or, or a plant, I perceive it in a certain way. Do they also have a perception of me? Which is consistent with their level of perception? Consistent with their level of perception, yes. Absolutely inconsistent with yours. So from your perspective, you would perhaps say no. From their perspective, yes. So are there aspects of rockness or plantness that I just do not grasp, just as there are aspects of third density humanness that they do not grasp? In a sense, but you can, if you wish, project yourself in your imagination into any symbol and experience it to whatever degree you will allow your imagination to enrich it. So you can be or explore rockness. Over there. Hi. Greetings. Greetings. I, as you know, I've been very busy. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so has everyone, and you have too. Um. One of the things that I really <laughs> wanted to ask you about is that, that I started to do more color. And um, one particular drawing that uh, I had done was the blue-white electromagnetic field with the face coming out from it, born out of the, of the background of the magnetic bubble. And Lois has been doing some automatic drawing, and she uh, came up with the same drawing. And the same Must be something going around. Yes, <laughs> but uh, it was. She has said, "I haven't seen her drawing. Is the same face? Can you uh, elaborate on the connection between Lois and I and our faces?" In a sense, there is not much to elaborate upon. You are simply tapping into the same source, and. It is not too much of a surprise that this is so, since you are both oriented in a way to desire to connect to that source. But you are beginning to, shall we say, play around with interpreting or channeling energies as well as discrete physical beings. Yes, it's uh, very exciting to me. Doing, doing that one in particular was... <laughs> I, I love doing it. Yes. <laughs> I love doing all of them. That one had a distinct difference. In a sense, you may understand it to be a sea of joy. Yeah. Ecstasy. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> and to you. There will be but a few more interactions. Shedding. Female uh, than Theo. I, uh, hi. I, I read that scientists are now finding that our earthly perception of our universe only is 10% of what really is there. Now that is rather arbitrary, for you are talking about 10% of an infinite idea. Well, that's how they expressed it in the... It is a bit more expanded than they are even imagining. For again, they still assume there to be a boundary or a place where space curves around upon itself. It is our perception that this, although there are, shall we say, warps within the fabric of space, that it is... The uh, thing that utterly fascinated me about this news release was the fact that the rest that we don't perceive, in fact, is of a uh, material or uh, some quality of existence that is beyond our perception at this point but there is within what you label to be the vastness of space various degrees of matter that you may call primordial matter from your initial big bang of this particular universe and they are beginning to discover and in a sense marvel at the qualities of it but it will begin to allow them to explore the fabric of your very physical reality well is this unseen matter from the fourth density? In the way that you mean, no, it exists within your own density. It does also overlap other densities, but it is discreetly existing within your own as well. 
Thank you. Understand that this is true for much of matter. You assume that you experience the only presentation of matter, but very often you are merely experiencing a facet of matter that is shared by many other dimensions. Simply the facet you see is not the facet other beings and individual entities in the other dimensional realities see. But there is quite a conservation in terms of matter being used very efficiently throughout the many different dimensions of experience. Did that translate? Yes, thank you. And to you. you Eli? Ace. Elon, it's my negativity I wanted to talk about. Oh, all right. And I would be thrilled at any suggestions you could give me. Oh, all right. We had discussion at one point a few sessions ago about how a lot of people on this planet have been taught to expect the best but prepare for the worst. Well, it seems that this preparation for the worst hits me. By the way, that is a paradox. You cannot expect the best while preparing for the worst, for the preparation for the worst is the same as expecting the worst. So understand that is one of the examples of primary beliefs that are incongruous. <laughs> now understand what you're about to share is an effect from having bought into that, but do proceed. True. Absolutely true. I did buy into it and now I want to buy out of it. And this is where the trouble started. If you say so. Trouble starts at three o'clock in the morning when I'm peacefully sleeping and I get awakened by a thought that maybe we call it negative and I start to dialogue with myself and I say, okay. I created this negativity. All right. I, how do I take this and, and now say, just expect the best on it. So then I. Well, first of all, you are already not exploring what it is you have created to use it rather than negating it. So in other words, can you be more specific? You wake up with a particular negative thought, for example. Here comes the trouble. It's because that negative that I think, whatever it happens to be at the moment, and it could be anything from something happening to one of my children to a business deal going the wrong way, I, I immediately in my mind start to say, okay, I own that. I created that thought. Now, why do I believe that? Before I go and choose something else, how does it serve me? What can I find out about what I believe before I then choose something else? Use it. Do you do that? Yes, and it gets worse. How so? I say, what if I'm right? How would I have to proceed if I am right to straighten it out? And a multiple of... Then you are into back into the mode of protecting, which is the same thing as expecting that an attack is most likely, which is the same thing as, shall we say, subconsciously setting up the attack. You are setting up the attack. It is not, what if I am right or wrong? It is that you have a preference and you can choose to focus upon that preference. And you can choose to have your actions reflect that that is your preference. And if something else comes along, you simply plug your preference into that and keep the focus on the preference, not reaffirming and con consistently reasserting the things you don't prefer. That keeps them hanging around. That breathes life continually into them. That resuscitates them. And the preference. So I would more or less be envisioning the preference. I would be tr I would be creating the preference and actualizing it in my own mind. Yes? Nice. And not needing to prepare for anything else. Simply stating the preference and acting according to that preference. And if something seems contrary to it, then look at how that serves you. Look at why you created it as it is and use it. And then you will find everything to fall into place to re-confirm and re-support the preference. I, that starts to happen, but sometimes simultaneously... Can we go through a hypothetical conversation? Can you drum up an issue and allow us to apply these specific principles to one example? It's going to sound so ridiculous. Well, first of all, do not invalidate yourself. 
Oh, this is one. Here's one that just came up last night. My daughter's boyfriend is getting a um, brand new 37-foot sailboat. Well, how exciting. Isn't that exciting? I'm lying in bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I thought, what if a storm comes out while they're out between Block Island? All right. Do you prefer that? No. All right. What do you prefer? It's like that's an insurance policy, so it won't. Ha if I suffer it at a time, then it won't happen. It's the, it's the craziest, most. It is not crazy. It makes entire sense, but it is your creation, and you are perpetuating it. If you continue to feel that it serves the function of insurance, you will continue to create the effect. If you can allow that the preferred reality can happen without you needing to be responsible for each and every step, you will allow that reality to unfold as well. What is your preference according to the sailboat analogy? Preference is that they have all the fun in the world. Now, stop. When you believe they will be swept up by a violent storm, how do you feel? I feel horrible. What do you then do? How are your actions subtly affected from having that belief and that feeling? Elon, I know just where you're getting to, but it's this <laughs> other belief I have that if I don't go through this insurance policy thing, <laughs> then the thing will happen. But if I if I don't do it, it might happen. But if I do do it, then it won't. All right. But understand, what we are saying is this. That belief is true. But so is the adverse. It is not that one is true and one is not. They are both true. And you get to choose the one you prefer. Now, do you feel you deserve to choose the one you prefer? Mm. I would like to. You would like to feel that you deserve? I would like to feel that I have the ability to choose the best one that is a, a joyous one. Well, you have the ability. And again, we are reasserting that it is true. It can work the way you are saying if you buy into it and perpetuate it. So that is why you get evidence that it works. But what we are suggesting simultaneously is that what you prefer is just as true and you are placing more emphasis. You are investing more of yourself in the insurance policy rather than simply things working out the way that you, shall we say, would prefer automatically. Elon, thank you for going into that with me. I have another question. One moment. Does that, in a sense, settle though? Or is there something you can use to take it the next step? I don't know. Is there? Do you have a suggestion on that? Always provide yourself with the positive alternative. Always, since you are initially approaching it by having the negative belief and feeling the negative feeling, always give yourself at least the opportunity to isolate yourself through your imagination. State the preferred belief until you state it thoroughly enough that you at least feel that, then compare the feelings. That will make the choice easier. But if you simply state the new belief and do not feel it, there is not as much of an energy created, an activation created to be able to choose. Once you compare both the beliefs, that is one step. But once you compare the emotions, one is overwhelmingly preferable to the other. And that gives you more of the ability and tendency to choose the one you prefer. So give yourself the opportunity, the advantage of always, after you validate that you have these ideas and feelings, stating the preferred belief and feeling that preferred belief. And if you truly muster up that feeling, perhaps in your imagination, you can pay attention to how that you is acting. And those actions will be the key to your liberating, to your choosing to act and be the embodiment of the preferred belief. Is that how the background changes? Yes, absolutely. For when you are willing to act on the new belief, the actions have results that physically change the background in a perceptible or more perceptible way. Again, when you change the primary belief, the background automatically changes, but you have a societal tendency to say, oh, it's the same background with one little change. One of the things we shared at the beginning of the interaction is to approach it as an entirely different background. 
but as you act according to the preferential belief, having acknowledged and not denied the old unpreferred belief, those actions physically change the entire background of your life. I hope so. <laughs> now hope implies doubt. <laughs> Forgive me. Give me time. <laughs> you do not need to be forgiven. There is no need to apologize. You are sharing who you are and you are exploring the advanced class of expanded consciousness. So therefore, relax, lighten up, and allow yourself to explore it. Allow yourself to dive into it. And again, provide at least the positive alternatives, not just mentalizing them, but stating them firmly enough till you actually feel them. That is what will change your ability to choose. The mustering up of the emotion for the energy motion, the emotion is what activates the mentality or the thoughts which then allow you to project how you would act. But if you do not allow yourself to get to the feeling emotional stage, it is a bit empty of a choice. Do you understand? Yes. For we perceive when you state the preferred belief, you do not do so and conjure up the emotion you would have, do you? I get to a point where the emotion starts to come and I'm almost afraid of it because it's, there's so much of it. All right. Well, dive into it one time and understand when you do, you will not drown. You will swim. Thank you. You can never, by definition, create more than you can handle. That would simply be extraneous and make no sense. So if you are creating it, you can simply take for granted that you can handle it and simply, as you say, dive in. There was one other question. All right. You said, we said, we spoke about angels at one interaction. And I asked, I don't remember if it was you or Bashar, are we angels? And you or Bashar said, yes. Do you recall this conversation? The idea is, though you are expressing one facet of your totality, you are simultaneously existing on many levels. And the particular style of consciousness you label angelic is one of those manifestations, yes. Could you tell me, could you tell me what that is? What our angelic quality is? What our angelic being is? What our angelic state is? In the sense that is relevant to you, it would be the presentation of what you might call a light body as opposed, in a sense, to a physical body. So therefore, you are more etheric in nature, a bit less physical, but still have a designation, still have a solidity, so to speak, of consciousness. Nothing more than that? There is a connection that many of you have, and you as well, with a system you might call Arcturus. And many times, individuals will interpret aspects of consciousness from that stream to be angelic. So that is a connection for you. The angelic meaning what, though? Just that lighter body? Ace. Not a... Uh, More etheric, less physical. A different train of thought? A different reality? Ace. There are various realms of this. Some are similar to your own reality. In the Arcturus sense, it is far more of a collective than individuals. Oh. Are there devils too? Shall we say there are manifestations of that idea? But everything is within all that is. Otherwise, it wouldn't be all that is. It will be almost all that is. <laughs> so you can understand everything to be an expression or a spark of the infinite exploring the many valid realities. Some separative or negative, some integrative and positive. That's all. Thank you, Ilan. And to you. Ilan? One moment. Theodore. Hi, Alon. Uh, a quick announcement, and that is I'm creating a newsletter called Info Free Flow. And uh, the idea is to have, provide a format for inventors and other creative people to simply express, give their uh, ideas to the universe and see what happens. Currently, as you know, inventors and such have to work through um, a pretty restrictive system 
if they're to see any profit from their inventions and so forth. I think that down the line, there will be some kind of private foundation system or public foundation that will recompense inventors who simply flow their work in, into the public domain. At, at least that's what I hope. And a question. More hope. <laughs> More doubt. <laughs> that's what I work for. <laughs> a, a question. Uh, we, we've spoken of um, the uh, reluctance of the government to release its information on UFOs as relating to its fear that the public will panic. And that is one idea, not the only. Ah, yes. There is also job security. Yes. <laughs> and this is perhaps a, yet another idea, and that is that uh, relating to technologies that the government has and uh, perhaps does not wish to divulge or make known to the public that it has. This is another nuance altogether, yes. Yes. Uh, it would seem to me that from a strategic point of view, tactical point of view, that the association might create uh, an easier path. It is not our job to do so. It is your job in that sense to decide whether or, wish you, whether or not you wish to invite us. It is our job, so to speak, to attend the invitation. But the groundwork, most literally, will be laid by you and your society. Right, but it, it, a, a slightly different angle. If, for instance, uh, uh, information regarding technologies that the government might have have and have concealed uh, were simply channeled, you know, to the public at large, uh, would this provide an additional incentive for the government to release all of its information or cause panic in the government? <laughs> Could be either, but again, it would be from our perspective a form of interference. So therefore, we refrain. I see. It would be regarded as a bit coercive. It is simply not our job. Our job is not in any way to take any of your power. This, in that sense, would need be your own decision. Your own response ability to decide to choose that reality and move with that as a premise then we can interact, then we can share. But it will be up to you before we can do so. Up to you. That is, shall we say, if you wish to call it that, the rules of the game. Uh, it much all depends upon our own willingness to be bright lights and to, to illuminate our environment with our intelligence, artistic and inventive and so forth. Ace, and by extension to your willingness to begin to accept and unconditionally love each other so that you have some practice. Yes. For that is our only approach. We only unconditionally love. Therefore, we only attract interactions whereby that is reciprocated. Therefore, obviously, we would not be quite at home on your planet right now. However, this is developing, this is changing, and this is accelerating. And the degree of willingness to even look at the idea of unconditionality versus extreme conditionality is changing. Thank you very much. And to you for changing it within yourself. For each individual making that decision and acting upon it attracts that around them and creates pockets and bubbles within bubbles of this unconditional love. Eventually it envelopes, so to speak, the entire planet and becomes that much easier as each individual is willing to commit to unconditional love for other individuals to do so as the momentum increases in your mass consciousness. Therefore, go forth and unconditionally serve and love yourself and others. And we thank you. Over there. Question about the devil or the concept of the devil. All things being part of all that is, there is the, that idea versus the positivity and the light. We attract the, the, we attract things of similar vibration. Ace, and that particular symbol is attracted by a vibration you call fear.
and cannot find cannot perceive is so unlike the vibration that it cannot even see unconditional love. So if one exists within unconditional love, one cannot possibly attract that other... It is impossible. impossible. Yes. And we thank you. Also understand that as you exist as individuals with these many aspects, that that particular embodiment is representative of something that perhaps you can say is a part of each of you, but everything exists within all of you. So if your particular primary belief is focused on unconditional love, Yes, that still exists. That negativity still exists. But it has no relevance. You don't have the glasses to see it. It does not have the glasses to see you. Therefore, it will always be your choice to believe it or not. <laughs> On that note, we thank you for your willingness to believe whatever you believe about interacting with us. For whether or not you do believe what we are saying we are, is unimportant. What is important to us is that the messenger not be focused upon and the message is what is of significance. This has not always been the historical case upon your planet, but this is one of the reasons we interact in this form, for it does not allow you to grasp onto us and allows you, if you find that the concepts work for you, to interact with the concepts. The interacting with the concepts and incorporating as actions these concepts into your life happens conveniently to also place you of a vibration where we can interact more blatantly. And this will begin to occur more and more in what you call your sleeping dream reality, for you have more of an acceptance and allowance of many different types of interactions in that reality, but eventually is translating from our perception of your momentum right now into the possibility of face-to-face -face interactions within this waking dream, believe it or not. Therefore, we bid you a most fond and loving life dreams and dream lives. Pleasant dreams.